It's local edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're in Los Angeles today and we're joined by Miguel Santiago. He is a member of the California State Assembly. And sir, I remember getting the email alert which said that there is an increased risk of earthquake. It spooked me. I tried to keep my daughters calm. Um, apparently there was some activity at the Salton Sea and so the risk increased to up to 1% for a major earthquake. What did you think when you heard that news? Well, look, it's important to look at California's history. Now we know yeah. that every 150 years there's gonna be that major earthquake, so it's coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming very soon. I recently had a daughter and have a, a three-year-old right. boy, uh, but what I was thinking about when we got that is, are we ready? And what do we need to do to get ready? Uh, so immediately my office uh, got the work and we reached out to the American Red Cross. We took a look at our district mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we began to, to initiate a conversation about what we do if, an, if the big one comes. And you brought with us a deluxe emergency preparedness kit. I have one in my home. I'm proud to say I'm not usually prepared, but I am <laughs> in this case. Um, this is for one person for three days. To start, one could argue you should have more, but give us a sense of what's in here and what we can do to prepare. And then I want to talk about some other legislation as well. Well, I think at the very minimum, uh, the most important thing that we ought to have is water yeah. and some sort of food. But critical it is that we have water right. because if nothing else comes our way, and you got to remember, if the big one hits, the police and emergency response mm -hmm. systems are they not going to be in place. Yeah. Absolutely. They won't be available. And if each person consumes about a gallon of water a day, um, and if it's hot, you need a little bit more. But, um, but what we really ought to think about in each household is how many children that you have and what are the important needs. In my case, uh, we pack powdered milk, uh, formula, lots of water, a couple of sweaters, and just basic things like that. Because when the big one comes, you've got a couple of seconds to, number one, find out where you're going to hide underneath, whether it's a stairwell or whether, uh, whether it's a door, whether mm -hmm. it's a table, and then immediately you're going to have a little bit of time to grab one bag and go. We also have to remember that we need to be prepared with medications. So many folks will get their prescription filled when they have one pill left. And if you don't have medications for some folks, it's life and death. And I mean, as I understand it, help me out, some argue that you should have medication for at least 30 days because if it is a real big one, it may be hard to access medication. It will be. I started at the very basics only because if you have small children, you, you really ought to think about what small children need. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no doubt that there's a lot of things you're going to need. Medication is critical, particularly for children and seniors, right. asthma medication, diabetes medication, or anything that's related to heart. Uh, but you're really going to have to pack some water, mm -hmm. uh, food that is non-perishable, some can openers, uh, and basic alcohol or rubbing it or something that you're going to well do. Well-stated, right. Yeah, it's something if in case there's some sort of injury. And, and I have to say, these kits, I bought one, they're not that expensive. I mean, and, you know, it's worth the expense, no? Yes, but even if you don't have the money to buy one immediately, what I would tell folks is grab any backpack at home, any right. duffel bag, and start filling it up with things. The other thing that's really important to do is find somebody out of state uh, who can be a coordinating body uh, to your family because if the lines go down inward and, uh, and, the state right. of Cal and in the state of California, you don't have the ability to communicate to each other because everybody's thinking about the same idea, you should have somebody in some other state that you can contact, let them know you're safe, your position, and that all your family members or loved ones understand how to contact that same person. And you should have a plan. In our house, we have a plan. Who picks up the kid if we're available to get there? Where's our central post? Um, where's everybody at? And, and how do we communicate? I remember the big earthquake coming out of Japan, uh, the Sendai quake, they call it. I also remember learning that they in the Tokyo region and in Sendai received an early warning. They have an early warning system. That system, as I understand it, saved countless lives. Our friends in Mexico City have an early warning system. While I think it's fair to say California has done a pretty good job trying to reinforce its buildings, we are woefully underdeveloped when it comes to early warning systems. Is that a fair assessment, sir? Yes, I, I think we are. And part of it is really, is really where to access the funds. 
Um, and look, I'll tell you about an area in my district, mm -hmm. um, in the Pico Union MacArthur Park right. area, where it's been deemed by the American Red Cross uh, a central point where tragedy could potentially happen. Those buildings have not been reinforced? Not been reinforced in a number of years, uh, but you also have large immigrant populations, and so FEMA mm -hmm. dollars become a become more of a problem. But what you can do, though, however, to prepare a community, if you're in my position, is to try to access uh, the community organizations or central posts that will serve as places that are going to be sheltered, but will serve as places right. that will have water. And so we've partnered up with the American Red Cross to do just that. But I do want to go back to this early warning system because, look, I believe that we got some funding through the federal government. I understand that you may be working with Senator Jerry Hill on a bill, SB 438, which would create, I mean, <laughs> an earthquake early warning system advisory board God bless all of you, but aren't we passing an advisory board? I mean, but I mean, look, you've said it, but talk me through this whole process. How can we just get, you know, I think Berkeley may have something that they're developing. Yeah. Well, there's some early sensory devices in California, and I think they give you about 30 seconds advance warning. And, I'm That's sorry, great. 60 seconds advance That's warning great. in some cases. But that can mean the difference between life and death. And I think what the legislature passed this year uh, was the beginning of a comprehensive approach about how we address this. Uh, it's one of those very important issues that we've begun to focus on over the last uh, several years because the big one may be coming and we may be due for it. And recently, as we heard, we were under alarm thinking that the big right. one might come. And I think this is one step forward. But I, see, I, I believe that you'll get a lot more attention on this issue, uh, both at the county and the city level and the state level, as we proceed forward. Um, this is probably one of the most important issues facing the state of California, uh, and we intend to do as much as we can to ensure that our population is safe and that we're prepared. Uh, but I think the, uh, the, our residents also have to step up and do what they need to do, such right. uh, so as just preparing uh, for the big one. I just feel as if we talk about it a lot, and this is not a criticism of our leaders. I mean, uh, but we talk about it a lot in the wake of something. Sendai, Haiti, whatever it may be, but then we forget. And, you know, our friends on the East Coast, they're suffering, uh, they've been suffering hurricanes. And we have this kind of, you know, here we're in La La Land and everything's going to be fine. And, you know, I got my backpack and I'm done. But how do we really capture, we have the shakeout. I mean, that, that's a yearly event, which is helpful. But how do we really capture the, the minds of folks so that they really recognize that we need to get our backpacks, we need an early warning system, we need our roads and bridges and buildings to be um, up to code? Well, one, the legislature um, has to take action, and right. we've begun to do so, and I think over the next couple of years, you'll begin to see that as an increased conversation that we need to do. Number two, uh, shows like this. Right. I mean, well, the ability right. for somebody to take a look at the, sh watch this show and say, I've got to prepare. You know, I happen to have become more attuned to this issue uh, when I attended a uh, breakfast and the guest speaker was the American Red Cross, and the very basic question that they ask is, are you ready for the big one? I went home that day and I put my duffel bag together. You know, I thought about the things that my kids need. I thought about the water. I thought about the cell phone battery, the extra battery that you need, and I got the work. You know, we called all our family members and said, hey, let's talk about an emergency plan. And what about your neighbors? I mean, we should be all talking to our neighbors. Oh, absolutely. Well, I think, look, in my district alone, I think we're over the next couple of uh, months, we'll be doing an education process. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have. We've partnered up with the American Red Cross, uh, but we'll engage with it a little bit more. We'll do all we can at the state, uh, but we're also going to ask residents to step up and do some of their work as well. Right. Um, you know, flashlights, water, sure. non-perishable foods, medicine. These are all important things. His name is Miguel Santiago. He is an assembly member representing significant portions of Los Angeles County. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We're in LA County today, and you're watching Local Edition.